Well, in the last video, we took a look at how to export from Microsoft Access to SQL Server, how to take a, a table in Microsoft Access and bring that into SQL Server. And it was a fairly easy process. Let's now talk about Microsoft Excel. Uh, you're going to, I think, work with Excel quite a bit if you're working in a Windows shop that works with data. You know, we generally do Excel spreadsheets for lots of inventory, asset management, tracking, but Excel also associates itself with CSV files, the comma separated values files. So anytime you receive a CSV, you're often loading up Excel to work with that particular set of data. So you're, you're constantly going to be doing this, so it's a good idea to get used to getting a fast way to bring the data that you have in Excel into a more query friendly a more relational system like a SQL Server for example. Now right now I don't have any Excel data so I'm going to go create some and I'm using Excel 2007. So here's what I'm going to do I'm going to go create a spreadsheet and we'll have this uh, spreadsheet we will have column names around the top so title and instructor, uh, so course ID 158, SQL Server 2008 integration services, and your instructor is Scott Wiggum. Uh, course 223 is, what is 223? Um, I think that's Exchange 2007 administration, and that's the wonderful Grant Moyle, and we'll spread these guys out you know in, in case you don't know you can double click these little lines and it will auto fit <coughs> excuse me the column uh, we'll do uh, one more I don't know 157 I just finished this one last week uh, 2008 DBA again Scott Wickham and so you know imagine that this is some fancy spreadsheet and I'm going to name this sheet down at the bottom just going to come down here and rename courses. Optional. You know that? Okay. Didn't have to happen, but I'm going to call it courses. Uh, then I'm going to have another sheet down here. We'll rename this one to be, oh man, I don't know. I didn't think of this before. Uh, packages. Okay. So then we'll have like a package ID and a package name. And so we'd have package ID one, which the package name would be our SQL Server 2008 training package and uh, SharePoint training package. Okay, so we've got two worksheets, okay, two sheets, one called courses, one called packages, and I'll go ahead and I'll delete sheet number three. And I'm going to save this, and I'm going to save it as an Excel workbook. Now, there's a big, big difference between saving an Excel workbook right here, and let me get my little pen here and show you. There's a big difference in saving this. This is for 2007-2010, or saving Excel 97 to 2003. You see, the difference between these two is this creates a .xls file, and this up at the top creates a .xlsx file. Make that a little bigger to not interfere with the background. So I'm going to create an .xlsx file. However, I still today work with .xls files quite often. And by the way, if I wanted to, I could save these as CSV by choosing that other format down at the bottom. That's that comma separated values. So here's where we go. Uh, file save as Excel workbook. Uh, put this on the root of my C drive. Call it learn it first. And you can see that Excel SX being appended there at the end. Fair enough. Say save and we can safely close out. Now, what I want to do is I want to bring this into SQL Server. So I'm going to take this into my SQL Server Management Studio. I'm going to connect up to a SQL Server 2008 server. And I'm going to make a brand new database and we'll call it from Excel. 
and it's an empty database. I think there's going to be one table in it called sequence numbers, and that's strictly because the model database had a sequence numbers, I think, from when I was doing uh, the 2008 DBA class. So that's where that table came from, is in the system database model. That's the template. So since it had that in there, then when it created this database from the model template, then it copied that table anyway. So uh, you'll notice that it is the only table in the From Excel database. OK. SQL Server 2008 folder, import and export data. OK, I could do it that way. But you know what? I did it that way in the previous video. What's, that's how we did our Microsoft Access. We went to the Start menu, All Programs, SQL Server 2008, import and export data. But in this video, we'll do it a little bit different. So I'm going to launch the Management Studio. And yes, I did close it just to reopen it. Connect up to the SQL Server. That is my destination. So I want to take the data from Excel into SQL Server. I go to my database from Excel. And I right click. And I go to Tasks. And I tell it that I would like to import data. Oh, I see. Pretty fancy, huh? So right click on it, go to Tasks, tell it I'd like to import data. And it's the same wizard. You can see Import and Export Wizard. I need to choose my source. And here's where it gets a little bit confusing here. Notice the Microsoft Excel. So I look for the Excel, and you can see the formatting down here. So this is a little different. In Microsoft Access, we had to actually choose the proper provider. In Excel, we choose Microsoft Excel. And then under the version, we choose the right version. It's effectively loading the jet engine and deciding which one it needs to use. Does the first row have column names? Why, well, yes, thank you. So I go to the C drive. <coughs> Excuse me. Choose it. Say next. Where is my destination? Notice, because I right-clicked on that database, it put that in the destination. So I didn't have to choose which server. It automatically detected, because I right-clicked over here, to put it in that destination. I said import data. That's what it went with. Bring that back towards the center. I say next. This is the same. From this point forward, we get the exact same thing we did in Access. What is it that you'd like to bring over? Do you have a table or a named region in Excel? Or do you want to write a query? Well, I definitely don't want to write a query against an Excel spreadsheet. I can. I don't want to. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to tell it to copy the data. Now notice here that it because we named the sheets something helpful, it has courses dollar sign, packages dollar sign. Those are the sheet names. There is only one table on that sheet. Therefore, we would be able to pull in one of those. Now, you may get yours, and it may say sheet 1, sheet 2, sheet 3. It's important to know which sheet has the data you want to bring in. I like to name the sheets because they're more usable that way to us later on down the line, and certainly in cases like this. So uh, what do you want to get? Do you want to get the packages or the courses? You pick. Oh, courses? OK. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'll get. Uh, OK, so one little goofiness that I notice is it defaults to putting that dollar sign in the table name. If you watched the previous video on Microsoft Access, you saw these two different icons here. Let me explain them for those of you who did not watch the Access videos. This icon here says existing table. So that's telling us that the source has an existing table called courses dollar sign. I happen to have written over the word source, but that's what it says behind there. This icon over here says, at the destination, I will create a new table, and it will be called dbo.courses dollar sign. So that little icon is supposed to have a little yellow shiny thing on it that implies, hey, new. So it's really trying to tell us that it's going to create a brand new table. 
Now, I'll show you the difference here. If the table that we wanted to import this in already existed, notice you can drop this down. And so it's picking up the tables in that database. And as soon as I change it to an existing table, then the icon goes, hey, hey you know, that's an existing table. Okay, so that's the kind of icons that we're dealing with. But I actually want to change this to be dbo.course. So maybe in Excel, the person who designed this loved plurals, but maybe I'm more interested in doing singular names when I work with my SQL Server database, which I am. But just incidentally, I prefer names that are singular uh, for my database objects here. Uh, so the other things that I could do here is I can preview. Uh, and now it's selecting from the packages. I think it gets something like the first 100 or first 200 or so rows that it shows us here but because we told it that the first row has column names you can see it's successful in bringing those in now under the mappings uh, if I come over here it has auto generated these object names here and it picked up that my course ID was <clears throat> it's not that it picked it up as a float what it picked it up as is that it was a number and that because it was a number, the float data type can handle numbers of any type and size. It can handle numbers with decimal places, without decimal places. Um, it's not going to drop any digits. And so it opted for the most compatible slash adaptable data type that it could think of. And it also that was also the reason that it went with the Unicode variable character column you probably have good reason to change these. Like for example, the course ID is not in my actual data, it's not a float, it's an integer. So I'm gonna want to change that to int, which is right there, and it's not a nullable. I, it's an, all of these in fact are not nullable types. They don't have any optional information. Now one thing that I might want to do in here is have additional columns in this table. See, it's going to create this table. Okay, you see that right there. It will create the destination table. If the table already existed, you do also, I'm sorry about that. You do have the option to append the rows, which is to do an insert, or to delete the rows and then add these new ones in its place. Uh, I could tell it to drop and recreate the table. Um, unnecessary for right now because this table doesn't exist. Here's what I can do. I can edit the SQL. So what it's really going to do, based on the choices that I've typed in, it's going to issue this statement, create table. This is transact SQL, create table statement. So I could then make this a primary key if I needed to. I could change these values up. I could add new columns to this. Or, you know, what a lot of us will do is we will create the table in SQL Server first, and then we will point the wizard towards doing it. But you know what, enough of that. That requires a little bit of extra knowledge. I'm just going to have it create that destination table as I created it here. And I'm pretty much done. We do have, this is a new feature in SQL 2008 um, that we did not have in 2005. Uh, but it's basically saying, you know, you've got this data type in the source, but you've got this data type set to the destination. How do you want to have that handled? I want to have it actually convert. And so if it doesn't convert, then I'm going to have probably some errors. And what's that going to do? That's going to cause the package to fail. So we're actually going to tell it to convert, and that's okay. If it cannot actually convert from a double to an int, then it's going to fail. And you'll notice that we could ignore it as well. But that's kind of advanced stuff that we're going to cover a data type conversion a little bit later in the course. So for now, I'm okay telling it, say, next. I'm going to run this immediately. I'm not going to save this because we'll save in the next chapter. And it does a nice little uh, breakdown. It tells us it's going to copy uh, the table rows into the new table. And before we get started, let's go over to the from Excel and let's see, does the table course exist? No, it is not there. But as soon as we say finish, it is setting the SQL command. It is executing. 
So it created the table. We can see that three rows were transferred. And when we run this now, sure enough, we copied that data from Excel into SQL Server. You probably still have some work to do. You probably want to go create a primary key, do some other things like that. But you've done the basics, which is to get the data out of Excel into SQL Server using the wizard. So I hope this kind of gives you some basic ideas of how to work with it. You are by no means done and ready to go start some full-fledged SSIS career. So how about we come back in the next video and we leave the wizards behind and we go into how to do this kind of thing just without the wizard. So I'll see you in the next video.